After visiting the historical places, Cloudy fell in love with Korean culture. To experience more modern culture, Sunny took Cloudy to interesting museums. The first place they visited was the Seoul Urban Life Museum. This museum has three floors of permanent exhibition halls, which have respective themes of the urban life in Seoul. It is open from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and closed on Mondays. The theme of the first floor is scenery of Seoul. The transformation of Seoul from a destroyed ruin after the Korean War to an advanced city of the present is manifested through public culture and literature with pictures. Throughout the 2,000-year history of Seoul, the city fulfilled its role as a melting pot of creating a culture of Seoul, embracing people from different regions of the Korean Peninsula. The second floor is about life in Seoul. The exhibits portray the stories of people in Seoul growing up, getting married, and raising their children again. Just like Parisian or New Yorker, Seolnegi was the new word for the people who moved to the city for various reasons and started building their homes and families. From populations or wedding methods to dating styles and writing diaries, every specific part of the life and the culture in the city kept changing and turned out into different forms. The third floor's theme is Dream of Seoul. It shows the busy lifestyles and passion for work to support one's families. The dream of buying a house, education that really was a competition, and never-ending working hours are displayed through the exhibits. From June 8th to October 3rd, the fourth floor has a special exhibit of Kyungchun Line, The Memories of MT. Since the 1980s, the number of university students gradually increased and they were allowed to form their own societies or clubs. MT are the initials of membership training, which since then became a Korean university culture to go on a short trip with fellow students. The exhibit shows the Gyeongchun Line train that links Seoul and Chuncheon, recalling the memories and romances of the young people in the 1980s. The next place is the Trick Eye Museum. It is open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and there is a ticket fee of 12,000 won. Trick Eye is the English translated expression of the French concept trompe l'oeil, which is a traditional art technique that causes an optical illusion of flat paintings to look three dimensional. It makes the art on the walls, floors, and ceilings look real and alive. You can go into the exhibit, stand or sit on it, and take unique photos completing the one and only art. Become an actor, a director, or a photographer, and be creative. When you download the AR app, you can also see the paintings moving or even blowing fire. The last place Sunny and Cloudy visited was the Seoul Museum of Korean Folk Music. It is open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and closed on Mondays. The direct translation of the Korean name of the museum is Seoul Museum of R Sounds. Here, R Sounds refer to local folk songs that are purely created and orally passed down through generations. As you can find karaoke's everywhere in Korea, Korean people has always enjoyed singing and been talented too. 
Singing never stopped not only when people gather to celebrate things, but also during work or rituals. The drastic industrialization took away most of the traditional music of Korea, and the elderly people are forgetting them too. This museum is established to protect the intangible cultural heritage of Korean sounds. Listening to the music in front of the miniature models and videos of the agricultural life in the past in Korea, you can imagine the scenes and feel their emotions. The first section is of work song. You can also play the music with the interactive touch screen. Recreation song is the second section. Through the songs of traditional customs and parties, you can listen to aesthetic melodies full of joy and happiness. Lastly, songs of rituals and consolation section conveys the emotion of Han, a feeling of innate sadness that comes from historical events or famous literatures of tragedy. Videos and miniatures reconstruct the scene of the rituals. There is a special exhibit, Doyong Nayong, until next May, too. It is about the folk songs of Jeju Island, a place full of diverse versions of folk songs. The whole museum is free of charge, so if you're interested, don't forget to visit.